I'm Dr. Peter Watson. I'm the director of the Tumor Tissue Repository Program at the BC Cancer Agency. And like many of you, I'm a researcher and a biobanker. I'm happy to report that biobanking has come of age. How do I know it's come of age? I can say this because we now all agree about the need to create a consistent standard, one that can be certified. Here's the challenge. We're all health researchers, and maybe half of all our results that are published in papers came from biospecimens that we collected, stored, and processed. In each case, they were done differently. This used to be okay, because our specimens were meant to be used in-house, or at least had a very narrow audience, our own labs and our close colleagues. Not anymore. The best research now demands much larger numbers of samples, and samples that are representative of broad populations, not just the locals. As soon as you reach outside of your sphere of influence to obtain a biospecimen, you don't know how it was collected, who collected it, or how it was stored. And the cataloging of specimens, cells, blood, tissue, is reported in a myriad of ways. Alas, now the scale of research projects has surpassed our ability to turn to a trusted colleague with a small local biobank collection, and therefore we need consistency of practice. Others are asking, under what conditions were the samples obtained? How were they stored, transported? What are the long-term storage systems? What happens if there's a failure of the storage system? Is there a backup? How are records kept? How a sample shared? Under what laws do you operate? Is there a different standard for government facilities, non-profits, commercial enterprises, and public-private partnerships? Did you know Iceland has three different laws that affect biobanking practices? Estonia and Tonga have different ones, so does the United States, and so does Canada. Then there's the policies of the International Society of Biological and Environmental Repositories, the US National Cancer Institute, European Clinical Trials Directive, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, US Food and Drug Administration, and the World Health Organization. The variations are subtle and nuanced. And let's not diminish the ethical questions. The privacy of the donor, the right of the donor to be informed about results, and all the other things that are important to the donor. What about the donor's right to compensation if their sample results in a commercially successful breakthrough? That leads us to our mission, to boldly set the standard here at home and share it globally. The Canadian Tumor Repository Network, known as CETANET, has developed the standards and a biobank resource center to be the home of certification programs that share these standards. These certification programs are applicable to all types of biobanks and come packaged with education. This describes and explains the standards and practices and how they are intended to increase public confidence, minimize the risk to researchers, labs, hospitals and health agencies while improving the quality of the collection of biospecimens. A biobank that is certified in our program has made an important declaration. It intends to strive to be in compliance with the best practice standards. You might be asking, is this program for me? Well, whether you collect one or 1,000 samples for research purposes, then you're a biobank, and the answer is yes. You may run a small rural practice that is helping to collect patient samples. Or you're a lab or hospital and a cancer or diabetes or kidney research facility. You are all engaged in parts of the biobanking process. Because there are so many different stakeholders engaged in the process of sample collection, we need a consistent standard. If we don't develop the standard, then one will be imposed upon us. As we all know, when other people do things to you, they don't solve the problems you want solved. Instead, they focus on the issues that matter to them. 
In other words, they choose the problem that they want to solve. And then it's not necessarily a problem that needs a standard that improves the quality of the results from testing and research. CETANET's biobank certification programs are about helping you. It's about best practices. It's about understanding the principles underlying the practices of biobanking. The programs focus specifically on the needs of people working in biobanks. Education is the core of the certification program. There are nine education modules. The basics of biobanking, which gives you a general overview of the field. Governance, ethics, facility design and safety, informed consent, biospecimen collection and processing, storage and retrieval, data systems and record management, quality management and processing. The best part is, CETANET's Biobank Resource Center is here to help, and we have the resources you need to help you adopt the best practice standards. Now you may be asking yourself, why bother? At the moment, you don't have to. But if we don't do this in Canada, then Canadian researchers will have trouble publishing and the impact will be a decline in the quality of our work. Our research community will find it harder and harder to attract funding and jobs will be lost. All because others will come up with alternative structures that fit their needs, but not ours. CETANET's Biobank certification programs make your work credible. Now is the time to demonstrate our commitment to quality through a national standard. Become a part of CETANET's Biobank certification programs and together we'll continue to build public confidence in the invaluable work Biobanks do. For more information, please visit www.biobanking.org. This video was produced in Vancouver, British Columbia by Oh Boy Productions.